Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing my blur powder video. So if you guys don't know, I'm a huge fan of blurring powders. I feel like powders are one of the most important steps in your makeup application, and they can either make or break your look, truly. A powder can absolutely ruin your makeup, or it can make the makeup come together. You can fix a lot of makeup mistakes with a powder as well. I do a lot of correction with makeup if I'm trying out a new product and it is not working out great. You can count on these blurring powders to really fix the job. So powder in my collection is extremely important to me and I am just a huge fan of blur powders because I love that filtered out look. I want my skin to look as smooth as it is possible. I want everything to look blurred and filtered and soft focused and diffused. And so this is when I reach for my blur powders. I use a blur powder every single day. It just depends on the scenario. And I'm going to talk about my four favorite blur powders. I'm going to discuss the differences between them and I'm gonna help you pinpoint what you might want in your collection. Um, maybe you want all four of these or maybe you only want two of these because of how they perform on the skin. All these powders serve different purposes for me. So I really want to get into depth of why I use certain blur powders, when and where I will use them, how I use them, how they differentiate, how they are similar if you need all four or if you only need one in your collection. So I hope you guys really find this blur powder video helpful. So I'm going to go over my top four blur powders currently. Surprisingly all of them serve different purposes and I'm happy that I have all four of them in my collection. So this like battle of the blur powders, they kind of all come out as winners because I use them for different reasons. And I'm going to get into it. I also have demos of me using all the powders so that you can see how I use them and how I think they are best used. But let's just start with the Sisley Blur Expert Powder. So the Sisley Blur Expert Powder is an exceptionally fine, perfecting, smoothing veil of powder that illuminates and beautifies the skin due to ultra high performance makeup key ingredients. So this was a really interesting product to me. So this is Sisley's Blur Expert Powder. This does come in only one shade, which I really wish it would come in different shades, but that's besides the point because when, how I use this, the shade doesn't really matter. So the way I find this best used is actually underneath makeup, makeup as a primer which seems so bizarre to use a powder as a primer, but this performs its best when it is used as a makeup base underneath your foundation. It allows your foundation to adhere to this powder and everything becomes a lot more smooth and long wearing. So your makeup will actually look so filtered and blurred and smooth. I have to say that this is a powder that I don't use on an everyday basis. This is something I reach for for a special occasion when I want my makeup to, lo to look absolutely smooth and completely filtered. You hear me talk a lot about that I like foundations that give you that filtered, blurred out look. This is the ultimate filtered base. And when you put this on underneath your foundation, it is incredible just how smooth, especially this area right here. It is like a, it's the smoothest surface that I've ever seen. You look completely textureless and poreless. It is kind of unbelievable how filtered your skin looks and it just looks so perfected and beautiful. I would say that this powder, it adds like the teeniest, tiniest bit of coverage. So if I could compare it to anything, it would be like the same amount of coverage you get from like the Chantecaille anti-aging face tint. It is very, very sheer coverage, but it does add like this slight, slight hint of coverage. And I think, um, I think a lot of that comes from the perfecting properties of this powder as well. So I love it underneath foundation as a base. And I know it seems so weird to apply a powder underneath your foundation, but truly when you apply this powder underneath your foundation, you will see what I mean with just how flawless and beautiful it looks. But your foundation over top never looks cakey or heavy. Everything just looks so smooth. So what I like to do with this is I will go in with like my face primer, if I'm using one, my skincare, and then I'll go in with my concealer. I'll conceal my under eyes. And then that is it. That, that is when I will apply this powder. I prefer to use a really um, dense brush. So I know a lot of people like the Chantecaille brush, but that is just too scratchy on my skin. So I really prefer, this is the Sonia G Master Face Brush. It's really dense, but the bristles of this brush are incredibly soft. So if you're someone like me with sensitive skin, 
this will be a great brush for you. And then I just stamp it into the skin. Again, you will see it in my demo. And everything just applies it beautifully over top of this foundation. Highly recommend this if you are looking for a smoothing primer. It still feels weird to talk about this as my favorite primer, but truly beautiful. Something that I utilize for more special occasions. And then this also serves as a beautiful touch-up powder. In comparison to all the other powders that I'm talking about, this is something that I would take with me to touch up. Now, I'm not someone that really touches up my makeup unless I'm going to be out for like a really long time, maybe like 12 hours or something. But if you are someone who requires touch-up throughout the day, this is the powder that you will want to use because it goes on really, really lightly onto the skin. It almost, it just adds like this sheer veil of perfection and um, that blurring property. But why I don't like to use this, you would think that this might be a universal powder where you could just set your makeup down for the day. But I don't like this as much as a setting powder because while initially it blurs, when you apply it over top of foundation, throughout the day, the blurring properties kind of fade away. So I almost feel like this isn't a very long lasting powder when you apply it over foundation. Now when you apply it under foundation, those blurring properties do remain the whole day. So it's very interesting how this isn't long wearing when you, when you apply it to set your foundation, which is why I really like this as a touch up powder because it's a very, very hard pressed powder. So it's not powdery in the slightest. When you put your brush into it, Powder isn't going to fly everywhere. It's very densely compacted into this container. And I think that's why it goes on so sheerly and why it's maybe not like super long lasting. But again, because it applies so sheer on the skin, if you are someone that requires touch ups, this would be a great powder because it's not going to look heavy when you are touching up your makeup. It's just going to add a very sheer veil of perfecting properties. So great to toss in your handbag as well. And I just really love this powder. So I highly recommend this one. And then I'm going to move on to the buffing powder or what I like to call the finishing powders. So this one is actually a recently released powder from Chantecai. They have two different finishing powders. They have their Perfect Blur finishing powder and they also have the Perfect Blur Glow powder. I'm going to first discuss the Perfect Blur Glow powder because this is what I would apply next in my makeup application. So this Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder is um, described from Chantecai that it will smooth and perfect your complexion with this soft focus blur powder that offers a hint of radiance. And it says to smooth the Perfect Blur Powder with the Buff and Blur Brush, blending in soft circular motions for a naturally flawless finish. So that is how I like to apply this powder, is I will take my Sonia G, now this one here is called the Face One Brush. She re renamed this brush to the Buffing Brush, I believe. So again, I'll link it down below. And again, I will show you in my demo how I apply this product. But I really like these two in combination. So after I've applied my foundation, my bronzer, blush, and highlight, I like to go in and buff everything together with a very, with a finishing powder. So a finishing powder usually has a little bit of a glow to it. And with a finishing powder, you are not going to apply that product to the center of your face because the finishing powder again has a little bit of a sheen to it and products with a little bit of sheen to it have the tendency to actually emphasize texture a little bit. It makes your texture look a little worse, which is why I would avoid applying this powder to the center of your face. What you want to do is apply it to the exterior of your face to help blend all your products in to smooth to get that really smooth transition so there's not a harsh line between your bronzer, blush, and highlighter. This is going to diffuse everything into the skin to actually make everything look more natural. So with the Perfect Blur Finishing Powder, you are going to buff it into the skin. What I like to do is I use a very light touch. So it might look like I am buffing in hard, but I am pressing very lightly onto the skin, just ever so subtly, and I'm buffing it into the skin very lightly as to not disrupt makeup underneath. But this brush is key into getting that really diffused, perfected look without disrupting that makeup underneath. I wouldn't recommend any other brush for finishing powders except for this one because I think it will disrupt the makeup underneath. This will really help get that perfecting effect. And again, everything's going to look beautifully diffused into the skin. You're going to have no harsh lines between your products and it just looks so much better. But this powder is really unique in comparison to some of the other finishing powders on the market. So a lot of other finishing powders, they do have that pearly sheen, but they have the tendency, if you over apply them, 
then they will emphasize texture on the skin. So you have to be really careful with finishing powders, like say the Guerlain Meteorites. Um, what's another finishing powder? I can't think of any off the top of my head, but oh, the Hourglass Ambient Powders. You have to be very careful with those ones because they can look heavy on the skin. But with this powder, there is a blurring technology in it. So while you get a very soft sheen, you are also going to get that really blurred out, filtered appearance, that soft focus effect when you buff it into your skin. I don't know if you can tell now, but the result of this is exceptional. It is so beautiful. This is a fantastic finishing powder. This is now my favorite finishing powder in my entire collection because it has that blurring property. Again, because there is a very soft sheen to this, I still would not apply it to the center of my face. But if you are someone with mature skin and you don't really like a typical highlighter, this would be a beautiful highlighter on the tops of your cheekbones because again, it is going to add a little bit of dimension and a very soft, soft focus effect to your skin that is very filtered and adds a little bit of that dimension back to your face without it being an obvious highlighter. So this would work really well on mature skin um, if you do have more wrinkles or a little bit more texture to your skin because this just smooths over the appearance of texture. So I'm really, really happy with this powder specifically as a finishing powder. And that is my favorite way to use this powder. I did try it a little bit up here. It's just not as blurred as I usually like in the front of my face. So if you're looking for a blurring finishing powder, this is the one I would recommend. I did want to mention this also just comes in this one shade. So it is just the Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. Only one shade available. And it's kind of like a creamy beige champagne shade. This does not add color or coverage to my um, makeup when I apply it over top. So it's just adding that blurred glow effect without adding color and coverage. So the next two powders I'm going to talk about are actually what I would say are the most similar and where you might only require one of them in your collection. So I'm gonna first start off with the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. Now this is limited edition packaging, so I'll put a picture up of what the current packaging looks like. It's in like a little pebble looking packaging. But this is their best selling ultra fine instant blur powder that smooths and perfects the complexion and is now available in our full range of complexion enhancing makeup. So this is a long lasting gel powder with a weightless finishing formula that helps skin appear softly filtered and flawless. And it is a gorgeous powder. So again, this is another baked powder, similar to the Sisley powder where it's really hard pressed. So when you dip your brush into it, you're not going to get a lot of powder pickup. And this is truly such a beautiful, flawless, blurring powder. If you want your skin to look really refined, blurred, so it blurs the appearance of texture. And also this has a little bit of a tint to it, so it helps with a little bit of discoloration. If you're someone that has redness on your skin or suffers from um, a little bit of discoloration from sunspots or post-blemish pigmentation, this would be a really nice powder because it does add a very slight bit of coverage when you are finishing off your makeup. So usually I like to reserve this if I'm going out like on the weekends or going out at night because it does add a little bit of a tint of color and a little bit of coverage. And this is available in two shades, in light medium and in medium deep. This is the light medium shade, it works well for me. I wish they would release this in some more shades because I know some fair toned, um, subscribers of mine have said this is too dark for them. But what I like to do with this powder is I will again take the Sonia G Master Face Brush and I will pick up product and with this product you want to press it into the skin so you're not going to be buffing with this, you're going to just press it into the skin. So again you really just want to ensure that you're pressing that product into your skin. You almost want to press the powder like into your pores because then you will get the most beautiful, blurred out, filtered look. Everything just looks completely smoothed down. But this is the type of powder that I would recommend if you are looking to finish off your makeup. You want to blur and filter your skin, but you want to add a slight bit of coverage as well. If you have any discoloration, maybe you are more prone to redness. This is something I would really suggest. It is a beautiful powder and one that I use so much. This is the actual current powder that I'm using. It's nearly done, but I didn't want to hold it up because it was literally like super broken. So you can see how much I do love this powder. And then the next powder I have to talk about is the Clé de Peau Refining Pressed Powder. So this is an ultra fine pressed setting powder that leaves skin looking smooth and flawless for the perfect makeup finish. 
pressed in their signature compact. So this is a silky powder texture that seamlessly sets makeup for a longer lasting finish. And it really does set down your makeup. It makes your makeup a little bit longer lasting. So again, I like to reserve powder application as the very last step in my makeup routine. And all I like to do is I either like to set down areas that are prone to get oily throughout the day or where I want to refine the texture on my skin. So everyone has pores in the front of their skin and I want my skin to look as smooth and filtered and blurred as possible. That is where I use these two powders. So the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Finishing Powder and the Clay Depot Refining Press Powder. That is where I use these powders. So I can alternate these out in my collection. They kind of serve the same purpose, except for this Clay Depot Refining Press Powder. I would say it's slightly more blurring than the Chantecaille one, just ever so slightly though. And the thing I really like about this one, it's very, very finely milled. It almost feels silky. It's a very brightening powder, so this will add a little bit of brightness, but it is not going to add coverage at all. So if I just want to set everything down to look blurred and perfected without having any sort of makeup-y look, this is the powder I reach for. Sometimes with the Chantecaille, it doesn't ever look cakey, but it just can be a little bit more of a noticeable powder, which is why I am very reserved and only applying it in the center of my face with this really precise brush. With this Clay de Peau powder, I actually like to go in with this Sonia G Face Pro brush. It's a little fluffier, and I like to, again, with this Clay de Peau powder, I stamp it into the skin. So it's going to get really stamped into the skin. It almost kind of gets absorbed into that skin that way. And that way you will get the smoothest finish possible. You will get the most filtered look possible when you stamp powders into your skin this way. And I really like this, again, because it will not add any coverage to my look. So I can be a little more, I don't have to be as precise with this powder because it's not going to add any sort of a powdery finish. It never looks heavy, it never looks cakey. It just leaves everything looking really silky and smooth and blurred, which is what I absolutely love. And all these powders do help the longevity of your foundation if you go in with them. So the Sisley works great as the primer. It will make your foundation last longer. Going in with that Chantecaille finishing powder, again, you are adding a little bit of powder to the exterior of your foundation, so it's going to help that look last a little bit longer as well, and it also just looks better in person. And then these two powders, again, when you press them into the skin, will help your foundation wear a little bit longer as well. And all of them are just so great at giving you that filtered, blurred look, if you are into that as well. It just leaves your skin looking so flawless, but without it looking heavy. So any of these powders, honestly, you cannot go wrong with them. As you can see, they do serve different purposes in my makeup collection. And I love every single one of these powders. So if you are looking for a blur powder, you can count on any one of these. And if you do have any more questions, please let me know down below. I tried to go as in-depth as I could, but if you do have other questions, please let me know and I will definitely get back to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it. And I will see you in my next video.